This video will be a demo of some of the basic features of Avogadro, particularly drawing molecules and doing uh, some optimizations. Okay, so I've got a benzene molecule here. I loaded that in a file called benzene.xyz. So if I already have an XYZ file that I want to load and then manipulate in some way, I can just load that file. So let's say I don't want benzene, let's say I want some other molecule. So I can say file, open, and I've got a directory here with a whole bunch of molecules in there. So what are all my options here? What do we like? Let's say about ethanoic anhydride. Okay, so <clears throat> that was some XYZ file, which it loaded the atoms for, and now I can see that molecule. Um, I can also get rid of atoms by clicking on the selection tool here. So I'll left click on that, and then highlight whatever parts of the molecule I want to highlight and select delete and deletes those part of the parts of the molecule. I could do that for the entire molecule and delete it all if I wanted to. Okay, so next thing to demo would be drawing atoms. So I can use the drawing tool here. So I have the draw tool and I also may want the tool settings to show up on the side here. So right now I'm going to draw a carbon atom by default. Um, the bond order is going to be single bonds and it's going to adjust hydrogens by default, adding in the number of hydrogens necessary for that given carbon unless I uncheck this box. So to start out, I'll leave this box unchecked. So if I click once, I get a carbon atom. If I then click on that carbon atom and drag out, I have a carbon atom that's bonded to that one. If I click again, it's not bonded, you'll notice. But if I click and drag, I can bond that to a previously drawn carbon atom. So I didn't have this button clicked, so it doesn't have, it's not adding in the necessary hydrogens for a carbon of that saturation. So if I click this button here, then when I draw new atoms, notice that the number of carbons come up appropriately. So there's four right now, it's methane. Whoa, zoom back in there. And when I draw out a new, a new atom, it gets rid of one of those hydrogens and then adds three on the next one. And if I draw it again, it's going to get rid of one of those and draw it three on the next one, etc. So these here, uh, the ones that I've already drawn, if I want to get hydrogens onto those, I can. I could either draw out the hydrogens individually, or I could go up to build add hydrogens, and it'll add hydrogens to whatever molecule I've drawn. So usually I like to leave the adjust hydrogens button on. Uh, usually it's not a problem. Um, usually a pretty helpful thing. Okay, so that's adding hydrogens and drawing. Now what if I want multiple bonds here? Like what if I want, for example, to have a butadiene molecule? So if I draw out another atom there, <clears throat> now that looks like butane, a very poorly drawn butane at the moment. But if I zoom in on one of the bonds and I click on it, left click, now it's a double bond. So you'll notice it adjusted the hydrogens again. Now there's a double bond here. And over here I can do the same thing. Click to make a double bond as well. Okay, I can do the same thing with triple bonds. If I draw another ethane molecule, I can make it ethene with one click. And if I click again, it is now ethene. That's now a triple bond and there's one hydrogen on each carbon. Okay, so those are multiple bonds. Um, we also want to be able to use different atoms, of course. If I click down here, I've got my selection menu for different atoms I can use. For oxygen, I can do a single click, oxygen by itself. Uh, not adjusting hydrogens at the moment. Okay, just taking a second. A little glitchy. This program can be glitchy. It's free, so I'll forgive that. Uh, so single click makes it a water molecule by itself. If I have a, if I uh, double click this to a triple bond and then click it again back to a single bond. Then if I click on the carbon and I drag it out, now I've got an alcohol because it's a single bond between the carbon and oxygen. If I double click, then I can get a ketone there. So multiple bonds work the same way with other atoms. Or similarly, I could, for example, on the nitrogen, take this carbon, click on it. Now it's now it's a, a nitrogen, and now this is an, an amide. Okay, so those are the different uh, individual uh, atoms. 
I can also set that bond order to a different value by default, just double or triple bonds, but I like, I like it at single bonds at the moment. Okay, so we can do all those kinds of things. Um, we can also make rings. Let me make one ring just to show it. For example, I can connect this bond, this carbon to that. Now I've got a cyclopropane there. But these molecules are all pretty poorly drawn. The bonding, the bond lengths aren't good. The bond angles aren't good. Uh, this would be a poor guess for starting structures for these kinds of molecules. So I can go to this tab here on extensions. I can click on optimize geometry and that will clean up the structure to kind of a lower energy, a much better starting guess geometry for the molecule. So if I click on that, and now we have much better structures starting out. So if I want to, if I want to move around without drawing new molecules and click on this compass tool here, navigation. Now, if I left click, I can rotate around either dimension there. And if I hit, and if I hold down shift and I click and drag, I can drag up and down to zoom in and out and I can go left and right to rotate in the plane. So that's kind of my manipulation tools there are in this are in this kind of tool. Okay, so I've generated some some new structures there that are much much better and cleaned up. Okay, so that's rotating the view. Now what if I want to rotate the molecule? So I could do something like this where I take my selection tool, I select all the atoms in a mo molecule, for example, this cyclopropane. Now I can take this uh, kind of gloved hand here, this manipulation tool, and if I just click in on a single atom, I can translate the molecule around, so I can move it around in space by left clicking and dragging. All the highlighted atoms will move, all the non-highlighted atoms won't. So if I just have part of the molecule uh, selected, it'll only drag that part. And then similarly, if I select the molecule here, and I have that, um, and I have that manipulation tool on, if I right-click, now I'm rotating around that particular atom. So now I can rotate the orientation of that molecule. And similarly, if I only have a certain part of the molecule specified, or if I only have a certain part of the molecule selected, then I'm only rotating that part of the molecule as well. Okay, so I can kind of manipulate individual atoms and bonds and parts of a molecule that way. If I want to stretch this bond, I can do that. Okay, what else do we have to demonstrate? I've done some deleting atoms. Let's say I want to go back to methane here, so I can select that, delete it, and then if I do build add hydrogens, it can add the hydrogens back that I lost when I deleted that. Okay, I can clean up these structures again and if I want to optimize them. And what else can we do? I can do uh, nice things like constrained optimizations. Let's say I only want to optimize part of my molecule and I want to leave the rest of it unchanged. So let's do an example here. Let's go to our drawing tool. Let's draw a benzene molecule. So I've got my six carbons here. I'm gonna click, make a double bond, left click, make a double bond, left click, make a double bond. Optimize my geometry. Now I've got a nice ideal little benzene structure. Now let's say I wanna add some substituent to it. Like for example, what could we add? We could add, let's add a carboxylic acid to it, make it a benzoic acid. So I can click and add a carbon click and add an oxygen. Uh, I can't quite grab that bond, so I'm gonna move that oxygen and that hydrogen out a little bit. Select those, go to my manipulation tool, lengthen that bond, select off of it, and then now I can click on that bond, make it a double bond. So now it's a carboxylic acid group. But let's say I don't want the rest of the structure to relax. Like if I optimize this full molecule, there's gonna be some deformation of the original 11 benzene atoms that I have there. And I wanna keep those in the same position. 
So I'm going to select those. I can also select, uh, make additional selections, keeping the old selections highlighted if I hold down the shift key and then click and drag. Now I've got those highlighted as well. If I hold the shift and I click on an atom, nothing happens. But if I hold control and click on it, I can unselect something. So I can select individual atoms as well by holding the control as I click. But I just want to I just want to highlight the whole molecule in this case. So I'll select that all. I can go to extensions, molecular mechanics, fix selected atoms. Now there's going to be constraints. If I look inside the constraints, I don't need to, but if I just want to look in here, I can see that I have the atoms fixed for these 11 atoms that I've got listed there. So if I do an, a geometry optimization now, extensions, optimize geometry, you'll notice only those three atoms move because the other atoms were constrained. And if you look at their XYZ coordinates, they will be in the same position that they were before. Okay, so lastly, we'll see now that we've built this molecule or we've uh, done whatever we've done with it uh, we can go to extensions and then you can get input files for a variety of quantum chemistry programs from this so for example if i go to sci4 this is an input file for the sci4 program i can select things like the, the theory and basis set things that we'll learn about in detail later and the type of optimization as well, a type of file, whether it's an energy, a geometry optimization, or vibrational frequencies. Again, things we'll learn in time. But there's our XYZ coordinates of our molecule as well. So we can get XYZ coordinates from these extensions as well. And we can also do so by going to File, Save As, and we can change the file format that we save this as. It'll do something like CML by default, but in this uh, save as type menu, you can scroll down to XYZ and you can save your molecule as an XYZ file. Like I could title it benzoic acid, etc. Benzoic acid.xyz, or I can leave that file format off and it'll take care of that for me. Okay, so those are some of the basic features of the Avogadro molecule editor. That's what I use a lot to generate initial structures for small molecules that will eventually be used uh, in other quantum chemistry programs.